What's going on, chess lovers? This is Maurice Bishop Chess. Y'all know my slogan, life is a game of chess. Guys, I'm letting y'all know that the Sneaky Black Lion uh, chess video course is out. Um, it's available right now. Um, it's been available um, since last night, so um, make sure you cop that course. I'm letting y'all know, man, this course is probably over four and a half hours long. And this course is not like... Um, the Ginger G. Young Black Lion course or the um, Chessable Black Lion course is completely different. Uh, with this course, I'm actually showing y'all um, real live game analysis of um, the Black Lion opening and exactly what my opponent um, played on me. I'm actually showing you how you can control the board on the king side and the queen side, so where you're actually dominating your opponent on both sides. So, and guys, I'm actually giving you a lot of the tips and the tricks that I probably have not showed y'all on the YouTube channel at all. So uh, definitely, man, uh, go cop that um, video course and everything. And when it's all said and done, um, when y'all do get it, uh, definitely give me a review. And let me know what y'all think. Alright, guys. Peace. Hey, what's going on, chess lover? This is Maurice Bishop Chess, and y'all know my slogan, life is a game of chess. Guys, I got a beautiful game to show y'all by the professional chess players, man, the masters, man. We got Sophia Poger versus Ion Rogers. Sophia Poger played as white. Ion Rogers played as black. Ion Rogers played as black lion, guys, so... Can't wait to get in this game. You know what I mean. Shout out to Rachel for um um uh, actually emailing me uh this game. Uh, definitely shout out to her. I really appreciate it. Um, uh, thank you so much, Rachel. All right, guys. Without further ado, let's actually get started on this game. So, uh, Sophia Poger plays e4. Uh, Ion Rogers plays e5. Knight f3, d6, d4, knight b to d7, knight c3, c6. This is C4. Okay, guys, uh, all of my videos that I play the um, Black Line, when they play Bishop C4, I always recommend that Bishop B7. Ion Rogers played Bishop B7. That is awesome. Uh, A4, Knight G to F6. Um, guys, when they play A4, I always recommend that A5. And I believe Ginger GM always uh, recommend A5. I, I feel as though I win a lot more games. When I play a5, when I don't play a5, I feel like um white get a lot of control in the queen side and it makes me uncomfortable. I don't like it. So um yeah. Another and another thing about this is um I was thinking about when usually when they come knight f3, I usually go a6. Um let's look at something real quick. I wanna know why. Okay, so if they go knight g5, then yeah, they just castles. So yeah, so so I guess that's why Ion Rogers wasn't afraid of that. With their black line, they castle. Uh, that's not my type of play, but that's, but then again, they're professionals. You know, this is what they do. All right. So after knight g f six, um, bishop a two is played. Okay, uh, a six is is played now. All right. So Sophia castles king side, queen c seven, over protecting the uh, e five pawn. Uh, we got a d6 pawn, knight um, b to d7. I'm sorry, knight b to d7. What well, is knight b to d7? And then um, the queen on c7, overprotecting his e5 pawn. Also, knight h4, e catches d4. Normally in my game, I usually go g6, guys. Um, but, you know, this might give me a little, I don't know, little ideas now. You know, uh, Ion Rogers actually take the pawn. And um, uh, it's actually um pretty interesting that he took that. So e catches d4, queen catches d4, and um uh, knight c5 is actually played. Knight c5 is played. Um, and then uh, Sophia plays b4. Now in the beginning, I was thinking like, okay, why not knight f5? Which is um uh, what I was thinking. Um, why not knight f5? Uh, the thing is. Um, after knight c5, I was thinking knight f5, but I was thinking if somebody do play this, maybe they want to like, you know, at least white ideas, you know, provoke 
uh black to take this night so that if he takes back with the pawn he can uh, bring his rook out and open up the e-file you know especially since the king is still in the center of the board so i mean this is my thinking you know when i play the black lion i gotta think about you know what is white's idea so in my mind i was thinking knight f5 but then i come to the conclusion that even after e, uh bishop catches f5 e catches f5 uh we got this beautiful uh knight d hour we got the beautiful um D pawn going to D5 move. And I thought that was actually uh, pretty interesting. Um, the thing is, I was thinking if if um, white goes B4, then we have knight C, E4. And I think black is actually okay. Actually, more than okay. I think black is literally okay in his uh, opening, like okay in his position. I actually like this for black, um, to be honest with you. Uh, but... There was another thing that I did saw because I kept relying on a B4 pawn like this to see. But I was thinking if Bishop F4, um, I'll Queen D7 will come to play and then maybe B4 this time. And I was thinking maybe white might be a little bit better because now my king is still in the center of the board. Uh, he could potentially bring his rook out. Now he already hitting my knight. And I'm thinking after knight C E4, white would take. You know, black would take back and then rook a e1. I'm thinking, huh, my king's still in the center of the board, and this pawn could potentially become deadly, so I might as well take the pawn because this um, bishop on f4 is undefended. But then I saw the move f3, and I'm thinking maybe black is in trouble or whatever, but then I come to realize that maybe not. Queen captures, f captures e4, and then. Uh, I don't know. He may have Queen G5 uh, coming into play, you know, which is what I was thinking. Let, let's see what the end say with this. So, yeah, he says Queen H4. But the thing is, I just... Uh, and this is the only thing I probably would say black after he castles Queen side, and I think this would probably be... I mean, it's it's, it's risky, it's like one of those risky things, but then again, after Black Castle's queen side, I mean, white is also, uh, black ha Black got the open G file now. So it, anything could go in this position, man. It's, um, I don't know, man. You gotta have a taste for it. I mean, it's risky, but I mean, it's, it's some stuff, man. I love it. I love it, man. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. So let's get on with this game. So, um, B4, uh, 96. Uh, queen d3, uh, and then a5. Okay, so after a5, uh, Sophia goes b5, and then that's when, obviously, yeah, then just saying castle. I don't like the castle. Um, Ion Rogers goes knight c5, which is actually a good post. Um, this is actually a good post for the knight. Queen d4, uh, knight e6. Um, he's hitting the queen. Uh, queen d1, and then black castles. You know, get himself out of the center of attention. Um, so Bishop A3, putting more pressure on a D6 point. Uh, maybe ideas of Queen D2, Rook FD1, or maybe Rook AD1, putting more pressure. Uh, rook F to D8, Knight F5. Very good move, hitting this um, dark square bishop. But then he goes uh, to Bishop F8. Um the thing is, yeah, yeah, I like knight at, knight f five. I think knight f five knight f five is actually a good move. I like knight f five. All right, so bishop f eight and then uh, rook b one. Uh, and I take it just to open up the b file, maybe, but then d five comes into play, which is good. I actually like this. Um, uh, the thing about I liked about this game because um, uh, with the, with this black lion, uh, Ion Rogers literally like focused on his pawn structure and the way he pushes in the center, which is what I really like. Um, it almost seems like White is attacking on the flank, and that's all he's doing. Uh, it seems like all his pieces are on the queen side, whereas Black, all his pieces is focused on the center of the board. And I think the idea here is. Uh, in order to like crumple your opponent or paralyze them, you gotta hit them where it hurts. You know, 
if you hit the center and everything, a lot of things can happen. So um, D5, bishop catches F8, king catches F8, E catches D5, C catches D5, uh, queen D2. All right. Another thing that I, I didn't realize is uh, I was thinking why he didn't take, why um, white didn't take. Well, and I, I actually have an idea why, because I don't think uh, Ion Rogers liked it to pin, but at the same time, he wasn't that bad off. Uh, Ion Rogers, he wasn't that bad off, though. Uh, I'm saying, <laughs> like, like honestly, but I don't know, cause um, this would this would have been this would have been interesting if the if um Sophia would have took the pawn. This would have been uh interesting though, and I think uh maybe Sophia uh was maybe nervous about the pin because the rook it literally is. On a knight, and the knight can't move because of the queen. But this would have been pretty interesting. If knight catches d5, knight catches d5, bishop catches d5, and then knight f4, trying to win a piece. Um, I think uh, knight e3 coming to play, knight captures, he takes queen c5. Uh, there's no check, so it's like he's still hitting this knight. So it's looking like white or black is going to win a piece, right? You got c4, queen catches c4. And then knight b6. I mean, this is literally, I mean, this is pretty interesting. Knight b6, he's hitting his queen. Uh, rook captures the queen. Uh, rook b captures the queen. And remind you guys, you're probably wondering why uh, why didn't uh, capture his queen. Well, in this position, uh, if you look at material, um. It seems like White has a, uh, a definitely an edge because number one, uh, he's about to win this piece uh, due to uh, Rook D8 check and then maybe try to pile it up on him. Well, maybe not winning the a piece yet or winning the piece yet, but um, I mean, he is about to win his Rook right here. So let's say uh, Rook captures D1, uh, Rook, Rook B catches D1. Uh, let's look at something here. So if Queen C5, Yeah, see, and then he just takes this uh, knight capture. So it seems like uh, in this position, white uh, is not too bad off um, in this position. He got two rooks and a knight, and he got some knights on um, pawn structure, which is on the fifth rank, which is actually really good. Um, but let's actually go back and see what happens if... Well, yeah, he ain't got no choice, though. Yeah, so, yeah, he's going to lose his rook. So it's, like, material-wise. But if we do go back and just say, uh, instead of going knight b6, uh, if he does take the rook and, you know, he takes, I mean, I don't know. It's pretty even. It seems pretty even to me. So I mean, this could end up probably a draw, but I think with the two rooks and and uh, the one knight, uh, might actually potentially win the game or maybe a draw. But it has a little edge of winning that game. All right, guys. But um, queen d two is what was uh, what was played. Uh, d four, uh, knight e two, knight e four, queen c one, king g eight, b six, which is a that's a hell of a move, b6. Um, queen e5. Okay. Hitting the knight. So then you got to go knight e7 check. And then uh, king f8. So after f4, because um, white is actually hitting the queen, then you got queen c5. The thing about that, um, black is attacking the knight and he's threatening discover check. So as you see, black is hitting this knight and then... Uh, Ion Rogers is hitting on uh, D3 check winning that night, uh, which is why Rook B5 was played. But you know, uh, after talking to Rachel, you know, uh, we both agreed that Knight G6 probably would have been better, at least just to mess up mess up his pawn structure. Because if you go if if you do it that way, then after Rook B5, I believe um because this F5 is already open, and now White could push the pawn on F5. This becomes um, a very, uh, I don't know, the position becomes very different now. So even after queen c6, maybe rook e5, because now um, 
you're putting pressure on this knight as well. And then uh, f5 is soon to come. So even if d3, uh, queen a3 check, you know, and then if queen d6, I mean, white can automatically just take this queen and then rook catches d6, c catches d3, knight f6, f5. You see this? This is all this is getting open. E catches or rook E catches on F five. Um, if knight G five, then you know you got a rook B five coming back. So I mean it's it's some chances or whatever. It's not totally like I don't know, like not worse off or nothing, but I it is interesting. I mean white I mean again black's still up a piece and everything, but I think white uh, could play a little bit better chess, but uh, in this position, you know, that wasn't the case. Uh, so the point structure wasn't messed up. So uh, Sophia just went uh, rook b5, and Ayan Rogers just took the knight. So after rook e5, knight f6, uh, f5, uh, pinning um, the queen right now, and then queen d6 because he's hitting this rook on um, e5, and then which is crazy. Um, yeah. Um, Sophia sacrificed the rook. Um, pretty much sacrificed the rook. Rook catches e6. Um, honestly, the best move probably would have just been rook b5. Instead of sacrificing the rook. I just think that um, probably would have been a lot better. But I think this knight is so strong. Um knight g5 knight e4 you know i i think this or maybe knight c5 and e4 i mean this knight is pretty strong so i i could maybe i can see why she took though but rook captures f captures e6 uh and then knight f4 uh i mean i, I see why i mean you want to create weaknesses on these light squares because the light square is kind of weak but we still got a light square bishop so it kind of covers up for it in a way. But then we got this um, light square weakness on G6, which is a beautiful square. Um, knight F4, uh, E catches F5. Uh, knight G6 check. Uh, King E8. Yeah, because uh, the king can't go G8 because his bishop is guarding that square. So that's the reason why King E8 has to come here. Queen E1. So Sophia was trying to be active, trying to um, get some attack going, which is the whole point. But um, knight e4, man, I'm telling you, man, on the black lion, that knight, that knight becomes strong, man, definitely. Knight h4, um, obviously, you want to win this pawn to undermine that knight on e4. So that's pretty much what Sophia is doing. Um, so after knight e4 or knight h4. Uh, G6 is played because you got to protect that pawn on F5. Uh, and then G4. Uh, Sophia try to put more pressure or undermine that knight on E4. Um, so Queen B4 is played, wanting to trade the Queens. And obviously in this position, White can't trade the Queen because uh, she is already down a Rook and everything. And she needs to find the initiative as much as possible. Um, but after this D3 move, I think this was this was it. Uh, obviously, uh, Sophia took Queen D4 check. And then, as y'all see in this position, uh, White resigns in this position. The reason why White resigns in this position, uh, because even after this, uh, Queen catches D3. Um, White is already down uh, a Rook. You know what I mean? And... Um, yeah, it's not it's not really nothing that um white could really do. I mean I mean yeah you could go queen catch a d3, rook catch a d3, maybe knight g6 and then rook d2. I mean this becomes a little bit too much now. Uh Yeah, I mean you could take this point. Like you could take this point, but after knight f2 check uh we can definitely take this. So even if he goes king g1, we have bishop catchers at five. Now we're already hitting um, the knight here. And to be honest, you bet better yet, better yet, maybe knight h3 check first. He comes here. And then you got bishop d7 because you're threatening bishop c6 checkmate, which is an option. And I obviously don't think you could block it with is um, um, knight e5, but... I mean, you do got 
bishop here. And you could work your way around. So, yeah, I, I think black's position is um too strong. You know, because this is the black line. The black line is too strong. But anyway, guys, I hope y'all actually enjoyed this um, video. I I will definitely um, post this uh, game or I'm sorry, uh, the link. Uh, this is the link to the uh, to their game. So I will post this in the description box. And uh, definitely, guys, if you like this video, definitely like, share, comment. Let me know what you think. And also, guys, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Peace.